right. Algebra 1, lesson 62. This is three lessons in one. Square roots, <coughs> higher order roots, and then evaluating using plus or minus. Okay, let's do some quick review of previous learnings. All right, if you were to see that, what are you going to do? Four times four. Multiply it, four times four. All right, if you saw this, what would your answer be? It'd be a positive 16. Right, so even though I'm multiplying two negatives, remember um, that you would have, the answer would be a positive because there's two of them. Remember odd and even? Remember that? Yep. So if you have an odd number of negatives, your answer is even. negative. Or negative. Yeah. If you have an even number of negatives, then your answer is positive. Okay? So <clears throat> just a quick review. All right, another quick review. What would be the answer to this? Two. Right. So we're saying what number would go into this twice the same number? So we would do two. Another one you might see would be this. What number twice? Eight. Eight. Eight times eight is 64. So remember that review? Yeah. Now, um, eventually you're going to start coming across things like this. Okay? Now, when you see this, I want you to cover. Remember, if it's on the outside, you're going to cover it. Mm -hmm. You're going to tell me the answer, 8. You're going to uncover it and put the answer like that. Okay, just so you remember to do that. All right. Now, next thing we're going to move into um, of this part of the lesson is if I had square root of 2 times the square root of 2, the answer is going to be 2. And let me show you why. If I had the square root of 64, and this means times when they're next to each other, times the square root of 64, what's the answer going to be? 64. 64. Let me show you why. Because the square root of 64 is 8, square root of 64 is 8, and these are next to each other, which means multiply, and 8 times 8 is 64. So, whenever you see two square roots that are multiplied, you basically just take away the square root. Yep. Got it? Mm -hmm. So, square root of 2 times the square root of 2 equals a positive 2. Square root of 64, square root of 64 equals 64. 64. Got it? Alright, so if you were to see, actually I'm going to leave this, that part up for just a minute to keep as an example. 2.42 times 2.42 squared, both of them squared, what's the answer going to be? 2.42. Very good. Alright? And if you were to see x minus 1 times the square root of x minus 1, square root of 1 times the square root of 1, the answer is going to be x minus, 1. x minus 1. Okay, see how that is? I just need you to know that. Mm -hmm. And if you need to use this as a standard, like, oh, snap, what was I supposed to do on that? Come up with a question you do know yeah. and see how it answers. Okay, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Come up with a standard that your brain understands until you can get it. All right, now, they're telling us to do this. Use the calculator to determine five decimal places square root 18. So I want you to write or tell me what is the square root of 18 according to your calculator. Tell me. The square root of 18 is 4.24. Two six two six four zero four zero six eight six eight. Let's stop there. Now, here's what it said: Use the calculator to determine five decimal places of square root of eighteen. So five decimal places would be one, two, three, four, five. They're wanting us to stop. Okay. So the answer would be this right here: four point two four two six four. That would be your answer. Okay. Now. The next one they want you to do. Use a calculator to determine two square roots of 10. Square root of 10 uh, to six decimal places. So they're wanting us to do six decimal. Um, and they're wanting us to do two square roots. Now that's going to be important to know in just a second. So tell me, go and tell me what the answer is. Give me about. Yeah, square root of 10. 3.1622. Seven, seven, six, six. Okay, we're going to stop there. Good. And they're wanting us to go up to six decimals. One, two, three, four, five, six. Stop. Now, because this seven 
is next to a 6, which is 5 or higher, what should happen to this 7? 8. Very good. We're going to change this 7 to an 8, and that is rounded. Do you see that? Now, it asked you to round it. Here's the exact question. To determine two square roots of 10. So 3.162278 is one of those, and negative 3.162278 is the other. And the reason why is because two negatives, when they're multiplied, make a positive answer. So you could just say plus negative. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you need to rewind that and watch that again, that's fine. But all I'm saying is, if I just did negative 3 times negative 3, then I would get a positive 9. Well, if I took negative 3, 1, 6, 2, 2, 7, 8, times negative 3.162278, I would get a positive answer. Yep. Okay? So, that's our positive answer, 10. So, we have to have a plus and a negative yep. um, on that to show two different ways. Okay? Now, here's what they're asking. Without a calculator, write the squares of the counting numbers 1 through 20. So, what they're saying is, 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, all the way to 20. Okay? So let's go on and do, um, let's go on and answer some of them. You can do them on your paper because it will help you later on if you want to. 1 times 1 is? 1. one. 2 times 2 is? Two. 4. 3 times 3 is? 9. 4 times 4 is? 16. 5 times 5 is? 25. 6 times 6 is? 36. 7 times 7 is 49, 8 times 8 is 64, 9 times 9 is 81, 10 times 10 is 100, 11 times 11 is 121, 12 times 12 is 144. Now, you probably know at least up to here, you probably know at least up to 10 just from doing your multiplication facts. You may even know what 11 and 12 from your multiplication facts. Um, but Go on and look at your book, and I'm not going to go in and finish this out. On your book, on page 62, 13 times 13 is 169, 14 times 14 is 196, and 15 times 15 is 225. Now, it recommends that you memorize squares from 1 to 15. Now, the book goes on and does 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20 for you. So, if you need to look back and go, okay, what is 18 times 18, you would know. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, the question now, um, I'm going to leave those up there actually. The question now is this, without using a calculator, determine between which two consecutive integers square root of 10 lies. Basically that's saying um, between what two numbers on a number line is square root of 10. Well, 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, so what would be the square root of 10 in between? 9, uh, 3, 4. Yeah, 10 would go in between right here. Square root of 9 would be 3, square root of 16 would be 4, so it's going to be in between 3 and 4 on a number line um, because 3 times 3 is 9, and 4 times 4 is 16, so the square root of 10 would be probably be something right in there. Okay? Really close to the 3, because it's closer to 9 than it is 16. Okay? But it just asks you to determine which two integers it's in between. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they say consecutive is because what number comes after 3? What number comes after 4? Consecutive is 5, 6, yep. 7, 8, 9, 10, whatever. They're in order. Okay? So... All right, now the second part of this lesson, if you need to watch that again, you can rewind it and watch it again. I'm kind of trying to move fast, so. Um, all right, higher order roots, all right? So they're going to teach you just a little bit more, and you have learned this before, um, but it's just going to be a review. So let's say I had an 81 here, and I have a 3 right here. What does that mean? Do you remember? So it's like number three, three times. Okay, three. you remember. Good. So ordinarily, when you see that, even though you can't see anything right here, it actually means a two. What number twice goes into 81? And we would say nine. 
9 times 9 is 81. The answer to this would be 9. So even though you can't see it, that's what that actually means. Square root of 81 means what number two times? This one means what number three times? And the answer is going to be, I think, 3. Am I right on that? Or maybe it's 2. Oh, sorry. It's just 8. Okay? So let's do 8. What number three times would be 8? 2. 2. So 2 times 2 times 2 would equal 8, right? 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. Good. So the answer to this one would be 2. You see that? Yeah. All right, let's try this next one. 81. Oh, best sneeze. <laughs> okay. Um, what number, and this one, since there's a 4 there, means what number four times? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking it's going to be 3. It is. So 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So this would be 3 times 3, 9. 3 times 3, 9. 9 times 9, 81. So that's just a quick, you could even do 3 times 3, 9. 9 times 3, 27. 27 times 3, 81. Okay? So that's just a quick example of that. Okay? Now this is where you need to really pay attention because some people get really confused about this. This time the negative is on the inside. That is important for you to know because then I have a 3 right here. So, 3 is odd. So, if I have a number, what number, let's first tell me what number equals 27 three times. 3 times 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. Okay. But what is going to give me a negative 27? Oh, if it's a negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 equals a negative 27. Remember, if there's odd number, then the answer is going to be a negative answer. Okay. So, the answer is going to, this answer is, what is the square root of negative 27? 3. Then it, the answer is going to be negative 3. Okay. Feel like you understand it? Yep. All right. Um, and then, last portion of this lesson is evaluating using plus or minus. Okay, for example, if I said that something equaled x equals 2 or something equaled negative 2, x equals negative 2, I could have easily said that x equals plus or minus or plus or a positive negative 2. So instead of writing two answers like that, you can just write it one time to show the same answer. That's what they're trying to show you. Okay? So, for example, look at this kind of problem. This is an actual problem you will see. 7, and then it's got this plus minus 2. Okay. Well, we're going to have two answers for this one because let's do this first one. 7 plus 2 is 9. 7 minus 2 is 5. So, they're going to say the answer to this is 9 or 5. You see how I did that? Yep. Can you see this marker very good? It's kind of I can see. dying. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's try another one of these problems. Okay. For example, this is my last problem of the, of the whole, uh, we're done after this. Okay, basically. All right, so here's what it says. Evaluate this. Negative 2 squared plus, then I've got negative 3 in parentheses squared. And then I've got this plus negative or plus minus uh, square root of 4. Now, stay with me for a minute. Let's go ahead and answer this and answer this before we start doing this. Okay? Now, whenever you see the negative within the parentheses, it means we're going to take the negative 3 times the negative 3. Whenever you don't see it within the parentheses, hopefully you remember, you cover it. Yeah. 2 times 2 is 4. You uncover it. And then you have your answer, negative 4. Plus, now let's do this one. Negative 3 times negative 3 makes a positive 9, right? So, I'm going to go ahead and bring everything else down. Plus, um, minus, negative 4. Okay? And now let's go ahead and answer this portion. Negative 4 plus 9 is 5. So, excuse me, now I have 5 plus or negative, And then square root of 4 is 2. See that? So now I just answer two problems. A 5 plus 2 would be 7, and a 5 minus 2 would be a 3. So the answer to this problem could have either been a 7 or a 3. Understand how to do that? Yeah. 
That's lesson 62.